I've wanted to travel Japan for a very long time now and after backpacking for one month through this amazing country, all I can say is it blew my mind. Japan has everything you can imagine from the weird to the wonderful. Some days you won't know what you're eating, other days you will just witness some downright crazy things. But this is exactly why I love Japan because it is just so un unpredictable. I never really ran into any major issues while I was traveling around Japan, but the way they live and their culture is sort of run differently compared to um, other countries I've been to. So before you start your trip to Japan guys, be sure to know these 10 tips so you don't run into any surprises. Let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel, Escape and Come Insane. If you're new here, my name is Brandon Bruce and I am here to inspire you guys to escape your comfort zone, follow your dreams and travel the world while giving you travel tips, tricks and advice along the way. So be sure to never miss out on my adventures and subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you never miss out. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so as you can see, I am not in Japan. <laughs> I'm currently in Chenggu, so I've been here for a few weeks now. So I had such an amazing time during my one month trip in Japan. And as if you have seen my previous videos, you can see I've done a lot. <laughs> Covenant bunnies. <laughs> um, so I spent a good amount of time in Tokyo exploring there. I did the Mario Kart through central Tokyo, which is awesome, and I highly suggest doing it. Then I've been to like Rabbit Island, fed some wild rabbits, went to Naruto Park, fed some wild deers. So yeah, it has been quite an adventure. Every day it was an amazing experience. But like every country I travel to, there's always things that I wish I knew before arriving. So. I'm gonna give you those few tips right here, guys. Let's jump into it. The so tip number one, always carry cash on you. Well, this is actually Indonesian cash, but yeah, you get the gist. <laughs> so it may seem like a bit of a surprise, but Japan is a huge cash-based society and a lot of places you go to, it will be very hard to find where they'll accept credit cards or debit cards. So of course, the easy solution to this is just carry cash. Um, another issue, will be finding an ATM machine that will accept your card. So there was a lot of ATMs that didn't take my card, but I found the best to be Japan Post ATM or Seven Bank ATM. So Seven Bank ATM is actually owned by 7-Eleven as well. So 7-Eleven is huge in Japan for some reason. You'll, you'll notice the 7-Eleven shops everywhere. And the currency over there is yen, so Say one Australian dollar is 75 yen, one US is, I think it's like 108 yen. And they have a lot of coins over there, which I hate. <laughs> they had so many, they have like one yen coins there, which are worth nothing. And they, you'll get one yen coins a lot. Like my friggin' wallet was always full of just one yen coins. So that is the deal with cash. Tip number two. Where the heck are the rubbish bins? So first off, Japan is the cleanest country I've ever visited, but weirdly enough, it is the country where it was the hardest to find rubbish bins. <laughs> The way people dispose of their rubbish is they just carry it around until they get home or they find a rubbish bin to properly dispose of it. But yeah, it will be very, very hard to find those rubbish bins. Usually the most common areas you'll find them is near vending machines. Don't worry guys, there's a lot of vending machines throughout Japan too. <laughs> Train stations and like out front of convenience stores. But don't even think about littering because a lot of places you'll get a hefty fine if you're caught and it's just the right thing to do guys just don't litter be cool tip number three don't eat while walking <laughs> so this one come to me as a bit of surprise but i realize japanese people really stick to their etiquette and manners and they consider it impolite or rude if you're walking the streets while eating so your best bet is if you're buying food from say a convenience store 
just walk outside of that convenience store and just eat your food there or carry your food for a while until you get to a nice park or somewhere to sit down and just eat it there. But yeah, don't eat while walking guys because the locals will probably look at you weird. But tip number four, when entering someone's house or accommodation, take off your shoes. So this one's pretty self-explanatory, but this is another note for polite etiquette. So when entering someone's house or you're going to enter an, your accommodation, you'll most likely be needed to take off your shoes and you just put them out front of the house or on a rack in the accommodation area. Um, I didn't find every accommodation place was like this, but majority of them were. So tip number five, you can't smoke in certain areas. So for those of you who feel the need to smoke, just be careful where you do it because smoking throughout the streets of Japan is actually forbidden, but they do have designated smoking areas <clears throat> So these smoking areas are usually out front of big buildings, out front of shops, around train stations, bus stops. Um, so just smoke in these areas, guys. Uh, you'll probably see a lot of signs too saying no smoking here. And even like sometimes when I'm walking, there's just on the pavement, no smoking. And if you are caught smoking in a non-smoking area, you'll probably get a hefty fine. So just be aware of that. But on the other hand, there is a lot of places you can smoke inside. So there's like restaurants, casinos, some parts of bullet trains. So yeah, I remember I went to one casino and it was actually just full of smoke. I didn't really like it that much. <laughs> so tip number six, transportation. So you have a few options for transportation around Japan. Number one could be renting a car, but this is probably the most expensive option. Two is getting the bus. This is a cheap option, but it will just be the long option. It will take like twice to three times as longer than usual. And the best option I would choose is the trains and metros. So trains around Japan are super, super efficient. It can be quite intimidating at start, but once you sort of get used to it all, it is actually really, really easy to get around. So when getting the trains, you can either get a JR pass or you can just pay normally. So a JR pass is what I did. Um, I really recommend it if you're getting a train a lot on your trip because I feel like it's well worth it. So you can get a seven day, 14 day or 21 day JR pass. So essentially, once you activate your JR pass, it is valid for that long and you can jump on the train as many times as you want within that time frame and you literally just walk through, show your pass at the gate, and you're good. It's very, very simple. So if you're paying normally though, you can do that by getting an IC card. So there's two different cards, but they're exactly the same purpose. One's called PASMO, and the other called, and the other one is called SUKA. SUKA. Oh, I don't know why I can't pronounce that. <laughs> so these actually cost 500 yen to get, and it's super simple to use as well. All you have to do is just go up to the machines when you get them and then you just top up however much cash you want onto them. And then when you go through the gates, you just tap through. Um, and when you get to your next destination coming out of the gates, you just tap out and it'll show you how much that trip actually cost. So even if you have a JR pass, I still recommend getting this IC card because the JR Pass isn't actually valid for all metros. It's valid for some, but not a lot. Um, so yeah, you'll most likely need that card anyways. And the best and easiest way to find out how to get around is with the app Navitime. I highly recommend download that app, or if you don't want to download the app, just look at Navitime online. So this is the main time schedule for the trains around Japan and it is super simple to use. All you do is just put in your current location, going to where you want to go, and you just pick a train that you want to get on, and yeah, go at that time, figuring out which places you got to get off and where you got to go. On this app too, it will show you which trains you can use with your Japan Rail Pass, and other ones you have to just pay normally. So just be sure to make sure you're getting the right one. But if you do want more in-depth detail of how to exactly get trains and metros around throughout Japan, then I highly recommend checking out my other video that I made recently. So I just literally go through 
my whole train trip in a day of how to get off, where to go, and how to do it all. So be sure to check that out too, guys. Tip number seven, should you get a SIM card or stick to the Wi-Fi? So personally, I didn't get a SIM card at all because I felt like I was good without one. Um, if I needed to use my maps, I have an offline maps, and if I needed to figure out which train to get, I always made sure I looked that up the day before and just screenshotted which trains I needed to get. But <clears throat> if you are thinking about getting a SIM card, I heard one of the best providers is Mo Mobile. So you can look into that. And another good option is Pocket Wi-Fi. So Pocket Wi-Fi is fairly popular throughout Japan, so you can choose to do that as well. But as I said, you can live without it and you'll find really good Wi-Fi at all the accommodation you're at and sometimes you'll find accommodation on the trains, buses or throughout the streets. Tip number eight, know when to go. So I kind of stuffed up and made this mistake, but I booked my trip like two months in advance thinking, yep, I'm all good, everything should go fine now. But one week before my trip began, I found out that it was gonna be Golden Week when I arrived. So if you haven't heard of Golden Week, this is essentially a one week public holiday and it is said to be the busiest time to visit Japan. So this is usually towards the end of April going on into May. Um, and because like the time frame this fell on, it was sort of like a 10 day public holiday. So during this, these 10 days, it made it super hard to find accommodation. As I said, I was lucky that I found out a week before I arrived. So I booked my accommodation in advance up until after the public holidays. But because of this, um, prices were like double, triple the price and it was just super, super hard to find accommodation. But luckily I did. So be aware of that guys. If you plan to visit Japan end of April, beginning of May, just beware of the golden week. And this could also be a good and a bad thing. Like the bad, it is super, super busy in a lot of tourist spots you go to. But the good was there was always something going on. Like every day there was like a big event or festival or something happening. It was really, really cool. So I didn't mind that. And overall the crowds were busy, but it was just super organized. So tip number nine, on the other note before, be prepared for those crowds. Because Golden Week or not, Japan can get super busy, especially in super touristy areas and like the train stations during peak time. So just be aware of that. And weekends is usually the worst time for crowds. But it doesn't really surprise me because literally there is more people in Tokyo than there is all of Australia. It's kind of mind boggling think about it but yeah that's true Ooh, well. <laughs> and weirdly enough being how crowded it was it wasn't actually that bad because everything is just super organized and it all just flows everything just flows really good and it's not like chaotic as you would expect it to be so overall I didn't mind the crowds too much and it's all part of the Japanese experience and for my last tip, number 10, tattoos are not welcomed in certain places. So across Japan, tattoos are associated with gangs and you may find it hard to get into certain places if your tattoo is exposed, um, such as onsens, pools and saunas. So if you do have a tattoo and you plan to go to these places, just be aware that you might not be able to get in. So even after encountering all these little issues throughout my trip, my overall Japan experience was way better than I expected. Um, Japan was probably one of the easiest countries I've ever traveled to because everything just sort of flowed smoothly and I didn't really run into any major problems. Um, Japan is also a super safe country to travel to. I never felt threatened or afraid that my things were gonna get stolen. And just the transportation alone is the best transportation I've ever gotten. So Japan is an amazing place, guys. And if you're planning on traveling there next, then be sure to follow these few tips so you don't run into any surprises and you will have the trip of a lifetime. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if there's any, any other tips that you have, be sure to share it in the comments below. But 
Be sure to give this video a like as well, subscribe to my channel, and make sure to watch all my other previous Japan content before visiting. Thanks for watching, follow your dreams, and escape your self. See ya!